Hey everyone, it's Vismaya Rubin, founder of Living in Gratitude Today, teacher, speaker, best-selling author, but my favorite role is that of a gratitude gangsta. What? what? And the lady to my left, I'm not sure what side of the screen she is on for you, is Tasha Chen. She is the co-founder of the Science of Getting Rich Academy, and we are going to talk today about gratitude for money. And one of the things you may not know is that Tasha is part of the Living in Gratitude Today journal. Super excited about that. Version 2.0 is coming out. Before we go any further, let me share this on my personal page because it is on the Living in Gratitude Today page. So thank you for saying yes and for being here. You are welcome. Thanks for having me. Very excited. Very excited to talk about money, talk about gratitude because we don't always hear gratitude for money. We don't always, yeah, we don't bring those two together too often, right? No, we don't. So thank you really for the opportunity to have this conversation. Yeah, I think um, it's a powerful conversation. And I think that, you know, some of the things I'm hoping that you'll touch on is how do we share gratitude even when we don't feel like we have a lot of money? Oh, yeah. We shall go there. We shall go there for sure. All right, so I'm going to send this to my news feed. All right. So let's start with that, like a little bit about that. We, we think about gratitude. Oh, I'm only going to have gratitude when something good is happening or when I have what I want or, you know, I'll show gratitude when I'm wealthy, when I have a million dollars in the bank, or I'll show gratitude when I have $500,000 in the bank. But what about when I have $10 in the bank? Oh, man. <laughs> so, you, you know, it's kind of like, there is this like secret sauce, right? That, that is so delicious and you've tasted it before and you see other people enjoying it and you're like, man, I just want what they have, you know, like they're onto something and I want what they have. And it's like, you're looking at the list of ingredients, but you don't quite understand like how they combine it, the amounts that they put in, the sequence in which they put it in. And then you might be missing the whole point of how to make that sauce. That's kind of like this thing with gratitude. If you're in the mindset of, I can only be grateful when I have X amount of abundance in the bank, right? That's the only, that's, I get the importance of gratitude and my logical mind says, well, that makes sense to be grateful for money. And certainly when I have lots of it, I am going to be grateful. Well, that right there is not understanding how to combine the ingredients, right? Because the law of gratitude says, and it is a law, and I want us to understand that before you go any further, right? It says that when you're grateful for the good things, including no matter how tiny they are, you know, I'm going to share some stories with you guys during our time together today of when like I was crying on my kitchen floor with nada and being grateful and how I express the gratitude. So this, the, the secret to this sauce is, can you be grateful right now, no matter what? And you're gonna say, even if you're gonna say, Tasha, my bank account is in the red. It's, I, wanna, it's, I wanna interject for one second because I think that's very powerful. You know, When people talk about success, they say, I'll be successful when, and a lot of the research, which is tied to gratitude on happiness and success really says, it's, it's the, it's the opposite of what we believe. Be happy yeah. now. And then the success will come be happy now. And the productivity will come. And the key to that and all the research is really about tapping into gratitude. So yeah. yes, you can be grateful for where you're at now, but I think that what happens is that people don't understand the how yeah, they don't get the process of what it is because we think of gratitude as oh, you know, I wake. It's an attitude of gratitude, which is, you know, uh, hopefully that's not offensive to you, but it's not my favorite. It's my least favorite expression because it's really about growing that gratitude muscle, building that yeah. muscle by doing these yeah. practices. Yeah, yeah, it's like gratitude's a verb, right? It's like it's an action. Like you, you are in it. You're, you're being it. You're doing it. You're, you're, you know, all those things and and. You know, again, like I truly believe no matter what your circumstances right now, and we're talking about money. So in the context of money, let's go to the absolute worst case, right? My account is in the negative. 
my account is in the negative. And I'll say, okay, well, let's say it's negative $100. I don't really like using the, at least it's not the worst case, you know, scenario, but, but sometimes you just have to go there because you have to really realize it's negative 100. There are people who are negative 100,000, you know? And it's like, no matter what, you can find something to be grateful for. Um, I like to say, I like to look at it as, and even if you say, well, I'm not in the negative, but I have zero dollars to my name. And I'll say, take a breath. As long as you're alive, there is hope that in the next second, something could change. Like miracles happen in a second. In the next second, something could change. Someone could literally just walk up and give you a dollar. I don't know how it will happen, but the point is that can't happen if you're not alive. So simply by being alive and being able to take your next breath is something enough to be grateful for, you know? So there's always something to be grateful for. And, and let's talk about like the bring it, making this real and practical. Uh, we're gonna share later on, uh, Vizmaya and I are gonna chat about a gratitude for money journal that I made. But one of my favorite entries in this journal is gratitude for spare change. Because every single household I know has a money jar, right? It's like your little spare change. You take it out of your car, out of your wallet, out of your pocket. And you just like throw it in this jar and you don't even hardly ever think about it, let alone to think about to be grateful for it. So on, on in this entry, in this journal, it says, did you know that what you consider spare change, what you consider spare change right now could mean clean water for someone to drink? It could mean medication to live another day. It could mean food for a family. Your spare change, that means nothing to you. You're like, I can't pay the mortgage with this jar of money. Well, that money that you have could make life a life-changing difference for someone else. So you have it. That's enough right there to be grateful for, you know? It could be a lifesaver to someone else. And, and I really make myself look at beyond the, oh, wow, I have all this money in the bank or, you know, the big obvious things to be grateful for. Just trying to find the smallest, oh my gosh, I just found a penny on the floor. <laughs> like, you know, I just found a penny on the, the Walmart parking lot, you know, that is so exciting to me and so much to be grateful for because I make it mean the evidence of abundance, the evidence of money showing up in expected and unexpected ways. So there's I always a way to be grateful. I remember you were, you did a challenge a few years ago and you were talking about the money on the ground. And it's like, if you don't pick it up, it's, you know, cause people go, oh, it's a penny. I don't need a penny. And it's almost like saying to the universe, well, ugh, I don't need your gift. And I, and I am one of those people also that when I see a penny, I pick it up and I'm like, what? And I put, and people are like, oh my God, it's dirty. I'm like, ugh germs, whatever. But I do the same thing and I get excited about it. And I look at it as a gift from the universe. And yeah. sometimes if I want to get a little wild, I'll leave pennies for people heads up so that they find, you know, gifts from the universe and, and they pick it up and go, wow, you know, but something else you also said reminds me of a couple of things. When I was in college, I was a bartender and I used to, you know, come home with singles and I would leave them all over the house or let my cat play with them. And people were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm so abundant. They just, the money is everywhere. <laughs> and when I, when I go and clean up my area, you know, my room or in my bathroom, I always find money because again, I leave it in places so that I have, and I don't think I do it consciously, but I leave a dollar here or I'll leave 50 cents here or $5. And people are like, you have money in every corner of your house. Have you ever noticed that? Or I'll start the challenges of put a dollar a week away, put it and I leave them and I don't touch them. People are like, what are you doing? But it's always magical for me because I find it in every corner. So I get what you're saying. Oh and, my and gosh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's really because it comes down to a feeling. And like one of the things that I do is like, you know, if clients pay me in cash, like my favorite thing, my absolute favorite thing to do is just put money away. Like, because sometimes there's just this idea of, oh my gosh, there's so much cash right now. There's so much cash around. Like, you know, I, I just, there's money. And it, and honestly, like, it could all be total a hundred dollars, <laughs> but it just feels like there's money everywhere. And I, I absolutely love that feeling. So I totally get it. 
Yeah. At your workshop, the last time we did a live one, I took a yeah. picture of myself and I threw money all in the air and I was yeah. doing a dance. <laughs> and it's, and it's not about, you know, it really, and, and, and we're making light of it, but it's not about that we don't honor it, but it's also about being able to play. And, and we're not making light of the fact that people are struggling right now, but how do we get out of a, of a mindset where we're constantly focused on the struggle and into one where that we're opening our mind and able to, to bring stuff in? Because it is a time right now that some people are challenged and some people do have some, some difficulty and we're not making light of that at all. But again, yeah. we want you to be able to play a little bit and how do we find, how do we open our minds to see the gifts that the universe gives us? And that's really the message that I keep hearing, you know, when you share. Yeah, your story yeah I love that. And money. I just want to speak to that, Ms. Maya. Yeah, because, you know, my period in my life where I was in that place that you described, right? It's really challenging right now. And, you know, I don't know how I'm going to make it this next couple of months. And I don't know, like something drastic needs to happen. And I'm just in fear. I'm in fear financially and I'm not feeling safe. And I think that is the scariest place to be is when you know we need money for survival bottom line we do you know we need it to pay for a roof over our heads and food to sustain us and and all the things you know that is required of just being alive today it requires money and and so when you don't have the money to be able to provide those things man it's like talk about the knot in your stomach the gasp in your breath the like fear so i remember a time in my life where I was in that place. I had just filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy and I call it the trifecta. I filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. My husband asked me for a divorce. I had no job, no solid steady income that it was like, okay, this is how the bills are gonna get paid. And the kind of bankruptcy that I filed was chapter 11, which means you had to commit to a repayment plan right? So I mean, everything in my work, my, my ex-husband, when we did our business, he was the one that kept his job while I ran the business. So the business has failed. The guy is gone, <laughs> right? Taking his income. And I am like literally shaking like a leaf every day in financial fear. So I just want to make this practical. You know, this morning, I know several of you that might be watching, you might have listened to the WPN conversation I had this morning where I talked about five gratitude practices. And, and my commitment in sharing right now with Vizmaya's community, you all know about gratitude. Like, she's a queen. I feel honored to be having this conversation because she's really the queen of this conversation. And so I, I said, you know, how can I really add value if you're in some of these places right now, and one of the things that inspires me the most is I could get on here and I could tell you, okay, you know, just be grateful for your debt. Just be grateful for your trauma that you've had with money. But I want to be practical and I want to show you and read for you and share with you exactly what I did that got me from there to here, right? So just, just listen in. This, what I realized at that point in my life it was like a scientific formula. I realized that every single day I was sitting at home on the kitchen floor crying in fear. I would pick my kids up from school. I would come home, open the mailbox, and every single day there in that mailbox was the proof of all my fears. Every day, overdue bills, you know, um, the overdraft from their bank account, like there'd be stacks of overdraft in like one day's mail, you know, the big past due red thing on the outside. I mean, that just would make me cringe. And I'm shaking because I know it's going to be in there. And finally, one day I connected the dots. I had spent the entire day in fear. And then I go to the mailbox and I have the result of that fear, right? So it was like, oh, ding, <laughs> like that's how this works. So what I, what I did was, I don't know how to solve my money problems at that moment, but I realized a connection. And I was like, you know what? All I'm gonna do is bring it down to the basic denominator and I'm gonna address the fear. So I got a journal. This is that journal. This is the actual journal I had from that time in my life. And I literally decided every time I have a fear, I'm gonna journal in gratitude, the complete opposite of that fear. 
So I'm going to read to you the first entry in this journal. And this was in, it's, let me see if I have a date in here. I know it was 2012, but it was, I don't have a date on the first page, but um, it was 2012, right? So we're, so this is eight, nine years ago. And I want you to just hear, what, I'm telling you I'm in fear. I have no money. I have mounting bills, like fear, financial fear. And I wrote, I'm so grateful for my life and truly honored to learn that all I believe possible and wished for, I have created with my thoughts. Even when they seem far-fetched, I dreamed anyway, knowing it all starts in my thoughts. I love the ease, fun, peacefulness, and laughter of my everyday life. Please remember, I'm crying on the kitchen floor writing this, right? It fills me with gratitude. It fills me with gratitude, knowing financially I have the physical evidence of immense abundance in my life. I live in the house of my dreams. I drive the car of my dreams. I love what I do that brings money to my life. It is the best use of my gifts and talents, and it comes so naturally and easy to me. When I wrote this, I had no business. I wasn't doing what I'm doing today. In fact, I didn't even know what I would do. But I was expressing gratitude at the time, right, for what I wanted to have in my life. Um, it says, the best part is all the fun I have doing it. I especially love the passive income part of my business and love the value all the products tied to my business bring to the lives of millions of people all over the world. I am constantly smiling and I feel so full and happy when I work. I still can't believe that's what I'm doing. I love that. And what I and, and one of the things that I that I hear is <clears throat> even when you're in when you're in that space, mm -hmm. if you want to create something different, you have to change one little thing. And and yeah. one of the things I always say to people is when you're in that space of feeling bad and sad or frustrated, it's okay to feel those feelings because you're human. But now yeah. what is that one thing? And for you, what I heard you say was that one thing was journaling and, and playing. And I call it playing make-believe, but I get the power of it. Like playing make-believe. If I could sit and play make-believe, here is the way it would be. And yeah. getting yourself out of that space, things aren't going to necessarily change in an instant. And they might. That's yes. possible too. Yes. But knowing enough to say, this is how I'm feeling and I can't stay this way if I really want to make those massive changes. And for you, it was journaling. And I think that's really powerful journaling about, you know, journaling it into existence and changing those thoughts and those patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And I literally, for anyone watching and you want to try this, you know, I literally sat there feeling the fear, the grip of the fear. And I literally asked myself, what would be the opposite of this situation right now? right? And the opposite for me was what I wrote about. I'm financially independent. I'm doing work I love. I'm driving the car of my dreams. I'm living in the house of my dreams. And, and here's the thing. No, the next day I did not wake up and all of that magically happened. But what started to happen was every little thing that I needed just started coming to me. And so am I going to tell you that it is now what, nine, eight years later, and I have it all. And it's, it, it, you know, like it developed over not eight or nine years. No, I'm not upset at all because in between I didn't suffer. I was never hungry a day in my life. I started paying my bills on time. I started doing work. I love, I grew as a person, like all these beautiful things happened on the way to me getting here. Right. But what I want to give you like the practical, how can you use gratitude to combat fear is just think about Whatever you're feeling right now that has you feeling that, that fear, what is the opposite situation of what you're experiencing right now? Grab your journal and describe it in gratitude. Easy peasy to do. It's funny because yeah. again, going back to your, your live event, I remember driving from Hollywood to Jupiter, which is about an hour and a half drive, going to this beautiful place. And I don't know what happened that day, but there was something that had me in a funk. And I called up a friend and I said, let's play make-believe. And she goes, okay. And I'm like, I'm going to Tasha's event and it's about manifesting and, and money and gratitude. And, 
So we started playing Maple Leaf and she's like, so what are you doing right now? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm in, I'm in my, my, with my man of my dreams and we're driving in his Bentley and with the top down, because you know, and my hair is blowing in the wind and all day. And we kept going into that space. And even though it was make-believe, it was about elevation. And if I tell you what happened that day, and I remember it like yesterday, we went so deep in the conversation that I was almost in tears by the time I got to the hotel because I could feel as if that were the truth. I could feel what it felt like to be so madly in love with my life. Yeah. And it was, it was absolutely magical. So again, it's about tapping into allowing yourself to not stay in that space of, you know, of, of the fear and the fear is there and the fear is real and we get it. But how do we elevate ourselves into a different, even if it's just one step above so that you're able to take the steps that you need here and here and open your hands and say yes to the universe. And that's, that's what I heard when you, when you shared that. Yeah. 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 And, and I always tell people, you know, like one of the most powerful things for me is to have an example, like somebody I know, you know, it's kind of like, you know, God bless you, Oprah. God bless you, Tony Robbins. God bless you, Rhonda Byrne. Like, you know, like you, you've all like mega arrived, you know, but I'm just like a touch away. I am right here. And I'm telling you, my days of being on that kitchen floor are not so far gone. And I'm not so like way out there that I don't remember. I can't relate. I can't understand. And like, that's why I said at the beginning, this is not to make light of what you might be feeling and just come in here and douse some like enlightened gratitude, you know, messages to you. It's like, yeah, I get it. I know how it feels. And I'm telling you, like, I know, like, I know, like, I know when I stayed in that feeling, it expanded and it showed up in my mailbox every afternoon. And when I switched it, I saw a totally different result begin to show up in my life. So the thing that I say in these conversations is just try it, just try it. Just grab a sheet of paper and try it. Another thing that we talked about, and I said this morning, you know, I talked about how can you be grateful for your debt? Like, you know, it's, we, we, we're so accustomed to being <laughs> burdened by it and worried about it. And just like, you know, we get into debt repayment plans. Well, I want to show you my little handy dandy, like, I don't think I've ever done this, this real <laughs> in all my years, but I went and grabbed it. I want you to see like how basic this is like total, like sheet of paper, notebook paper, right? This is, this is keeping it real right here. When I had these columns, and I just grabbed this so that we could come on here and do this. So this is dated uh, 2016. And I made this and I just grabbed it and I looked at it and I was like, man, I have none of these debt today. They are all gone. And when I made this activity to just express gratitude for my outstanding balances and to commit to them being zero, And here I am living it, right? So, you know, I'm not going to tell you right now, go find a way to pay $50 extra on your bills. And when you're like, I don't have $2 extra. That's not what this is about. What I want you to hear me say is that you have something within you that is even more powerful than anything practical you can think to do. And the problem is we're disillusioned into thinking, well, the only way I can pay off my debt is to go get a second job and a third job and a fifth job. I didn't do any of those things. I'm going to tell you what I did so you can do it too. And here it is, proof, right? Um, I actually got this first part from, from the book, Ask and You Shall Receive, I think by Esther Hicks. And it says, it is my desire to keep my promise regarding all these financial obligations. And in some cases, I will even do twice as much as is required. I love the feeling of allowing abundance to flow as I see all these turn to zero. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So for me, what I did was I I made a list of all of my outstanding balances. I forgot, I didn't use debt anymore because debt just makes me feel disempowered. It makes me feel hopeless. Like I'm never going to get from underneath the burden of this debt. So I just don't use that word. So I said, these are my outstanding balances. I listed it and I made a commitment that I was going to turn them into zero. 
I didn't have a plan. I didn't know how. I didn't go get a third and second and fifth job. I literally just did what I'm telling you to do. And what I did in addition was I looked at every single thing that was on my list and I expressed gratitude for why I had those outstanding balances, right? So I had a big mortgage. Why, uh, you know, how can I express gratitude for, for having a mortgage? I'm grateful that I have a mortgage. It means two things. Somebody had the confidence in me to loan me money. And two, because of that mortgage, I get to live in a beautiful house. That's a sanctuary for my, me and my kids. I run my business from my home. Like I live in a nice neighborhood. I'm so grateful for this outstanding balance called my mortgage. Oh, Just that, I have that, hang on a second. That conversation right there, looking at same conversation, I have, you know, $50,000 in debt, but look at what that allowed me to do. Yeah. That's a great yeah. conversation. That's a great way of shifting things. And it's not, again, you know, saying that it's not there, it's not present, it's not real, but wow, look at all these things that that allowed me to do. Allowed me to do or to be or to have. And it's not just, it's not just the gratitude for it is that I want you to hear me say that being grateful that you have turned these balances into zero and that you're committed to that, whether you know how you're going to do it or not. I did not know how I had no money coming in when I did this. Right. But I'm here to tell you that I don't have these balances anymore. And it's four or five years later. And what I want you to hear is that your commitment in gratitude is more powerful than any plan you can sign up for. Because part of signing up for a plan is recommitting to debt. It's like I'm putting the focus on debt. When you're committed to it being zero and you are committed to that, magic happens. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And like I said, share the real deal, like behind the scenes, here's what I did and have taught people, lots of people to do the same things. And it's created results for them. You know, the thing is, is just understanding that this is a law. So it's kind of like, I don't think twice about throwing something up and it's going to come down because the law of gravity says that's what's going to happen. The law of gratitude says when you are grateful for things, you receive more of the things you're grateful for. And there's it's science behind Right. And because yeah. the science behind it shows that our brains are constantly scanning. They're constantly in motion. They're constantly and what you feed it, what you tell it to look for is what it finds. So if you're constantly looking for the things that don't work and the debt and the, the problems, that's what you're going to see when you yeah. tell your brain. And that's why the power, that's why some people's gratitude practices don't work is because they wake up and they say the same things. I'm grateful I'm alive. I'm grateful I have feet. All of that is wonderful, but that's not what a gratitude practice is. At least that's not the way the research shows it. The latest research says, if you want to really tap into that space of gratitude, you need to find things that are unique to the day. And by training your brain to look for those things and by looking for things, like you said, you know, wow, all you did was flip the script a little bit. But the minute you start to find those things that you're grateful for that are unique to the day, and it may be something as simple as, you know what, today while I was on the floor and crying, I decided to write the opposite in my gratitude journal. I decided to write the opposite or today when I went to the mailbox, instead of, you know, freaking out about the bills, I said, wow, you know what, this bill allowed me to have lights in my, uh, in my house and this bill allowed me to go on that vacation or whatever it is, but to yeah. start to look for those things that are unique to the day so that your brain is constantly in scan motion to find the good and the positive and the beautiful. Yeah, we are so aligned, like literally, you know, one of the, the next places I was going to go is be on constant lookout for things to be grateful for, right? And that's one of the things that I teach. It's amazing to wake up and be grateful for your health and the roof over your head and the food in the fridge every day. I'm not discounting that at all. But I'm also saying what's really powerful is when you literally give your subconscious mind the job of finding things to be grateful for. Because the grateful mind that is an expectation, it's looking out for the best. It's looking out for things to be grateful for. Just think about that. You get what you expect. So if you've trained your mind to be in constant gratitude, to be constantly finding things to be grateful for, 
it's going to find things to constantly be grateful for. And I'm pretty sure we're grateful of amazing things, which literally what you're saying is I'm setting myself up to be just in, in constant amazement at the, the incredible things coming my way in life. You know, I, I don't know about you, but like, I'm like, wow, that is really cool. It is yeah. very cool because what starts to happen is, you know, you pay attention to the details. And I think yeah. that's the magic, you know, this isn't about money, but it is in a way. I was sitting outside working the other day. We're in South Florida. And if I tell you the weather was like perfect, I had my umbrella out. The sky was blue. It was just magical. And I'm writing and I'm really in my zone and I'm vibing. And all of a sudden I look over and I see this beautiful iguana. He was far away enough from me where I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't want you coming on my shoulder, yeah. but... <laughs> Yeah. And it was just like this magical moment. But because I'm in that space of finding those little moments, I see them all over. And that's yeah. what I'm hearing you say about getting in the excitement of, of finding money, discovering money, seeing money, like the penny, get excited. I found a quarter, you know, when I, when I go to Aldi's and somebody leaves the quarter, I'm like, look at that. Look how nice, how generous, how wonderful. I love it. We are, I'm just, <laughs> so you can imagine it's kind of like sitting, getting to sit with Santa Claus to talk about the magic of Christmas. That's what I feel like. It's kind of like <laughs> getting to sit with you to talk about gratitude. And like we said, before we jumped on, like, you know, a conversation about gratitude for money. It's, it's not something that we put together very often, you know? Um, and, and, I, and I really, I love that we're so aligned on it and, and especially the way that we come about the conversation and the ways to look for things to be grateful for. Um, one of the things too is I learned along my way and for the entrepreneurs that are listening, like gratitude is actually a business strategy. Like Say you have your marketing. That. Yeah, you have your marketing that you know you're going to do. You have your sales that you know you're going to do. You have your operations. You have your, right? All these things that are part of how your business is going to create the results that you desire. But I am telling you that I have found that gratitude is an actual strategy for creating results. What do I mean? I'm trying to find um, a page in this journal that really speaks to that but I'll, I'll tell you for me every year I create a financial intention and I am a crazy person I like I do crazy I like I come up with numbers that would blow people's mind because it makes no logical sense like we have a marketing strategist and he asked us what our financial goals were for the year um and actually he put a number in the in the document and then I looked at it I was like I don't know where you came up with that number that's not my number <laughs> and he's like, this is not intended for your purposes because you are crazy, <laughs> right? And I'm like, all right, as long as it works for you. But for me, I'm over here dreaming big. And here's my strategy. By being grateful for it now, as if it has happened, is far more powerful than any Facebook ad I'm going to run, any right? Any of the logical things that we think needs to happen in business so we can create a financial result. I can't be grateful for that financial outcome until I see it, believe it, and know within myself it is possible for me. If I am able to achieve a level of gratitude in myself as if that's already done, it's done. Like it's done. It exists. I created it. It's an outcome that's coming to me, right? So I tell people, it's kind of like we get so caught up in all the traditional stuff that we forget the low hanging fruit. And this is a low, low hanging fruit in creating a result. Can you think of what do you want to experience financially in your life or in your business specifically this year and just start being grateful for it, feeling the gratitude as if it's happened? That is the most powerful thing that you can do to create a financial result. I've proven it. And if you ask me, that's what I'm going to tell you. And don't worry about the how, don't worry about the no. details, just the feeling. I get it. I totally get yeah. it. And it's, yeah. you know, it's interesting because every time I'm going through something, somebody will say to me, you know, why do you worry? The universe has your back. And it's kind of like the same thing. If when you're feeling that sense of gratitude 
for what's to come. It's the yeah. same conversation. The universe has your back. Yes. The universe yeah. has your back. Yeah. And that's one of my mantras. So every time I'm like, the universe has your back. So create, expand, play. Expand. Yeah. Keep asking. I'm so excited because so I'm going to sit down and write after we get off this call. <laughs> so in this gratitude journal, I just found one that, that kind of relates, right? So it's day 16. It says a specific balance that you desire. Think about how amazing it would be to check your bank account and see an amount that makes you really happy. Like, think about that. You're checking your bank account and there's a dollar amount in there that just makes you really happy. What is the number? And right now on this page in the journal, begin expressing gratitude that it is yours. So I use this to create a significant amount of money as a bank balance. That was a big, wild, crazy dream for me. And if I was to sit and think about, this is how I'm gonna get that number, I would still be trying to figure that out. So I didn't, I just said, this is the number that if I saw that in my bank account someday, I would be over the moon. And I just had the number in mind. I wrote it down, I expressed gratitude for it. And when it did happen, Oh my God, the combination of things that came together for it to happen, I could have never predicted. So I always say, think trying to figure out how is really the most inefficient use of your time and energy. The best thing you can do is just to think about what you want and start being grateful, seeing yourself as having it and expressing gratitude for it now. Yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> And if you want to get your hands on the journal, we've been talking about this journal for quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I, I had to reach out, obviously, to Queen Gratitude over here <laughs> once I had this done and said, and, you know, I just I just asked for smile, like, do you think your community would enjoy an opportunity to express gratitude for money? And for 30 days and have it all done, have the prompts. So she's got a link. For all it's, of already, it's already it's already in, the, in comments. the comments on facebook as we were talking i typed it in we do have people on the facebook so hello to everybody on there on the facebook you like that on the facebook <laughs> on the facebook i love it yeah so if the you link is already the link is already there Awesome. Yes. Yeah. So if anyone watching has questions, you know, like I said, this is, I wanted this to be a behind the scenes. I don't want to just drop like the practical tips. I want you to, I wanted to share like the real, like hands down, here's what I do and here's what I've done. Um, so you've got the link to get your own copy of the 30 day journal. And um, are you, you doing a 30 day with people or how is that working? Or do we start uh, it on? Our no, actually, this is a like, do it, do it on your, you know, do, do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Do it yourself. What I am doing with people and let me grab that. So once you download the journal, one second, once you download the journal, you will continue to get, you know, messages from me. And the next thing I'm going to invite you to is a money manifesting party. So we're going to create like a vision board for those of you that have used that language, a vision board. We're going to create a manifested board just for your finances right? Bet you've never done that before. <laughs> so we're going to do that together. And once you've registered and you got your journal using the link that Ms. Maya shared, then we're going to invite you to that. It's February 13th. So, you know, you'll come and I'll show you exactly how to do that, but that's coming up. Um, but I want to go back to one thing about like being grateful for wherever you are right now. So, you know, I know a lot of us want to save for retirement, right? And and I remember when all I could do was $50 a month towards like my, my retirement, my 401k kind of thing. And I just expressed gratitude. It's $50 a month, but I'm so grateful when it can be 5,000. Like I just literally, I'm doing 50, but I would just add the zeros and express gratitude. And like what happens is you create a neural pathway in your subconscious mind that says, oh, you're really depositing $5,000 and you don't have to do anything else. That's what you, you know, so key to this magical process. I'm not going to tell you the science because really I'm like all about the like, just tell me the magic. Tell me it's magical. Sprinkle the fairy dust and I'm there. So I'm here to tell you I did these things and it worked, right? And so I went from, I could barely do $50 a month to being able to deposit $5,000 periodically because I was writing gratitude for that all along, way before I could do it, 
you know? Um, so just be inspired to start. Just be, just be inspired to try to start and know that this, this gratitude practice is like we were saying, it's, it's an act, it's active, you know, you're doing it constantly for everything and it's going to change your life. Yeah. And start with the, start with the doing the opposite, writing the opposite. If you're in that space right now, because whatever happened, the pandemic got you or however it is, start in that one, one activity, that one activity, writing the opposite writing the opposite, yeah. writing the opposite and yeah. allow yourself to not just write, but feel what is that feel, feel like, like, and like the, actually like, like time out. That's so good that you said that because right. That's again, what's missing with people. I'm doing the gratitude practice and I'm not seeing any result. Well, yeah. If you're not feeling grateful, you're not going to get the result. So the bottom line is you literally have to put yourself, close your eyes for a minute before you write, before you mantra, before you affirm and you put things all over your mirrors, before you do all that, close your eyes and go, I just saw the money in the bank. Oh my gosh, how, how am I feeling? That's a reality. How is it gonna feel? And make your, that's what's cool. You don't have to have the money there right now. You can still have the feeling of gratitude for it right? So feel it and then write your intentions, then write your affirmations, then say them, then do your board. But you have to feel the gratitude first because what happens is it's kind of like, I, you know, we've heard the universe doesn't know if you're dreaming or if it's real, right? That's what happens. It doesn't know if you're like make-believing <laughs> or if it's really real. Like Vizmaya said, when she was doing that activity with her friend, it was so real. She was moved to tears. She was crying, as if it were really happening. That's where you want to get to. When you get there, you can rest assured the money's in the bank, it's done. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, so two other things I, I, I would love to share too is like, um, I just shared with you gratitude for what you want, right? Which is how I've grown my business. So I know that a lot of people, you know, cause we do this, we go on Facebook and we like follow each other and we kind of see what we're up to. And, and, and I defy logic. Like my business has not been like this, you know, it's been like this. And, and I'm, I'm so open about exactly what I do. I think sometimes people don't believe me and there's, they're like, it's too, it's too simple. You really can't just be doing that, but I am really just doing that. But the Everything whole thing, the whole thing of that is, is it's this is where the shift is. So it's, it's, it sounds very simple, mm -hmm. but when that, you know, and one of my favorite lines from the science of getting rich, and you'll have to help me because I don't know the exact wording, but it's basically like, when you're looking at your life, stop looking at the reality that's here right now. Like go for, go further. Because if you're looking at the reality that's here right now, you may not like what's there. So you, it's, I think chapter five, I think. Oh, I know exactly. I'm like, let me see where I can find it. But here is what it said. It says to think according to appearances is easy. Everybody can look at their bank account right now and go, yeah, there's only 50 bucks in there. That's my reality. That's it. I don't have any money. I have $50, <laughs> right? And literally what you do when you do that is you're saying this infinite universe only has $50 for me. That is not the truth. That is a lie. That is looking at the bank balance and saying that is the truth. The truth is there's an infinite supply of money available. How do you know? Well, you have created $50 as your reality while other people are over here creating $50,000 this second, right? So there's an infinite supply. And what I realized was that what I was doing was looking at my bank balance and saying, that's the truth. That's the reality. But here is the cycle, like the thing behind that. What's in my bank balance today is a direct result of the thoughts I had two minutes ago, yesterday, last month, last year. So, you know, all of 2020, when we were in fear around money, it's showing up in our bank account right now. Say right? that whole line again, though, the, the appearance one. All right, let's see if I can find the actual text. I know it. I just know it's to find exactly. Oh, I where thought you like. had it. I'm sorry. If you don't have no, it. No, no, I think it's in the chapter on thoughts. So just give me a second. 
Um, Mm, I will find it, I promise you. Okay, here we go. It says, to think according to appearances is easy. To think truth, regardless of appearance, is laborious and requires the expenditure of more power than any other work a person is called upon to do. To think what you want to think is to think truth regardless of appearances. So to look at your bank balance and see $50 and be able to still think the universe is abundant and infinite. My supply is like beyond my wildest imagination. I know that's the truth. I see that $50 there, but you know what? I have no idea how 50,000 is gonna come my way, but it will, it will. That is thinking truth. And it's not easy to do that. It's simple, which is what I'm telling you I've done but I've had to be in the practice constantly of not looking at the appearance and agreeing with it, but looking at it and saying, that is not the truth. The universe is far more abundant than that $50 bank balance, far more. That is not my truth, right? So yeah. That is my, my favorite line of the whole book. And, and Nancy reminded me of this the other day. She's like, yeah, you, you read the science of getting rich with your high school students. And I, and I read it the last, part of the year and they were like what is this and if there was one thing that they if there was one thing that I wanted them to get it was that piece right there and that's all about mindset yeah. like how do yeah. we how are we looking at what so and I think that that is such a powerful powerful that is that is such a powerful way to live like it's not what we see yeah. It's what is our truth? What is, what is our truth that we, and it goes back to what is it you're writing? Yeah. What is the opposite? How do I stay in that vision? And every time another thought comes in and go, that's not part of the vision. Thank you for sharing. That's not part. Thank you for sharing. And that's yeah. not always easy, you know? Right. And it was, um, Robert Emmons said when he was talking about gratitude, he's the science, you know, the science, the, the most, the person who is known for most of the scientific research on gratitude. And one of the things he says is, you know, gratitude is an effortful state to create and maintain. It is not mm. for the intellectually lethargic. And that yes. reminds me of that also, you know, being in that space, it, it takes work. It's if you want to be lazy with your thoughts, have fun. But if you really want to manifest and create, like I'm hearing you talk about, it's really about doing the work. And every time one of those thoughts come in, you get to, you know, you get to send it away and finding and looking and, and, and seeing. Yeah. So I love that. And I want to bring it down to this. Like if I'm listening, I just want to bring it down to so you can see, because sometimes I think we're not aware of the choice that we're making. So I want to just plain as day show you the choice yes for me to constantly master my thoughts and redirect them to the truth that there's infinite abundance and believe that requires work it does right it requires constantly like i this book is full look at it full <laughs> right so i had to, i've had to constantly do that to get here and even here at this point i still continue to do this work but i want you to understand that the choice that i made was to do that work versus what i felt was effort and labor labor for me is hard it's hard that is a choice it's this working on my mind or this going and efforting and laboring and taking time and sacrificing and struggling and being in that energy of worry, anxiety, depression, overwhelm, all that. That's a choice that you have in front of you, right? So which one are you going to choose to do? That's the way I looked at it. And I gave up on this way a long time ago. Like to me, this, it's not, no, it's not easy, but it's the easier of the choices yeah I hear you I hear yeah. you yeah ah this has been so great all right <laughs> so we've been going for a while and yes, I was uh, gonna say yeah. any last thoughts you want to share and um the the link to get the journal is already in the comments so please you know scroll to the top of the comments and go ahead and grab the link yeah 
Get your German off. Um, you know, I think one of the things, two, two quick things I want to say, when you are in a gratitude practice and you have been receiving amazing things, take that opportunity to say more, 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 right? I talk about this all the time, every opportunity I get, because I think we're kind of wired to go, well, that would be greedy. Like, I just got something amazing and I'm being grateful. And now you're saying to ask for more. Absolutely. Yes. Here's why. When you are grateful, when you're so happy for what you just received, you're in the highest vibration. You're more connected to the source from which everything comes than your normal everyday activity. So at that time, when you're so like right there connected, plugged in, that is a perfect time to say, I love how this feels. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please, more, more of it. More, 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 right? I, I promise you, oh my gosh, you're going to see it rain, <laughs> things for you to constantly be in gratitude for. So that's the, that's the second to last one. And then this just final tip, and I shared this this morning on WPN and, and, and every chance I get is I've made myself now um, be in the habit of being grateful and asking for more money when I don't need it. Think about that. When do we go ask when we have a need? right? And if you're only always asking when you have a need, what you're kind of training yourself to do is say this practice of this magical thing that happens always comes from when I'm in lack, mm. right? So I, when I have no need, like last week, one of my stories I've been sharing is every day I journal a list of things that I'm going to manifest. And last week, one day I said, I'm so grateful for an unexpected $2,500 coming to me. I had zero need, I'm telling you, zero need for $2,500. It wasn't from a need place. It was from, well, the universe is abundant. I can ask for anything I want at any given time. And I want to I want to be in an abundant energy. I want to be asking when I'm not coming from need only all the time. And that day I got a check for 25, uh, for, I'm, not, I'm sorry, for $250. So I kind of laughed. I was like, universe, you missed a zero there, <laughs> you know? But I was so grateful for $250. Perhaps had I not asked for 2,500 that day, I would have never gotten the 250. You know, that's kind of how that works. So I encourage you to, like, I think a lot of times when we hear about gratitude, our immediate thought is, well, I need, so let me go ask and be grateful. Try to also be asking in gratitude when it's not even a need, just because the universe is abundant and loves when you're grateful and loves to bless you with more. I love that's that. That's cool. Yeah. That was a great, uh, that was a great way to, to end this whole conversation and, and really reach out to either one of us. If you want to tap into that practice, if you need some support, we're both here to do that for you. Grab the, the journal, you know, the link I said is already there and, um, Please, you know, in the comments, share what's one thing you're grateful for today. Share one thing that happened yeah. in the past 24 hours that you are grateful for. So we can, we can open up that vibe. And if you're really, really feeling adventurous, go ahead and write your story in the comments, like your, your money story. <laughs> yeah. So how yes, do people find you, Sasha? You know, right now, what I would love is if this conversation really lit you up and you've resonated with it and you want to be amongst a group of people who are living like this, so you can, you know, it's like, it's one thing to watch me, but if you want to see a whole bunch of people doing this and living it and sharing for real, then go ahead and join our community on Facebook. It's Money Attraction Community. Money Attraction Community. Just do a search for that. You see a picture of me and come join us. Let's just live like this. <laughs> live in gratitude. Living in gratitude. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I love it. So thank you all for being here with us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to jump on today. What a great conversation. I'm super excited. I'm going to get off and I'm going to journal. I'm feeling really pumped up. And um, yes. I also downloaded the journal. So I'm going to print it because I'd like to, to write so I will be doing that today. But thank you for, for being here today. And um, thank you for having me. Thank my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. So leave your comments in, below and we'll be with you all again soon. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. I 